At 202 centimetres, he's one of the big boys at the Blues. A milestone, a new contract, and finals on the horizon, things are looking up for this Carlton big man. He's next. Everyone, welcome back to Friday Knockoffs, brought to you by our friends at Pepper Jack Wines, of course. I'm Dylan Buckley, and I love it when we have a guest from my mighty club, the mighty Blue Boys. Welcome, Mark Pittnett. How are you, my friend? Hey, thanks for having me. Very, Probably very good well. Good to catch up. Nah, it's been a while. <laughs> I've been, been trying to get a hold of you, but you're a bit busy at the moment. Now, we have a lot to catch up on today, but before we do, what have you bought in here? Normally, people order in. You've bought something in. I have. I'm preparing to play, so I have pikelets before every game, and my girlfriend, Elise, actually made these pikelets wow. with... We'll hide the chocolate from the dietitian and whatnot, yeah. but the chocolate and the strawberries, so, yeah, I smash pikelets before a game. Are they that extravagant with the Nutella and with the cream? And... Uh, for dietitian purposes, not no, normally, okay. but... Yes, no, very much. That, chalk chips, anything I can get on top of them. Mate, it's so good to see you, as I said. Now, we have some history together. We'll tell you a lot of probably stories today. But one off the top, nickname Strength. Yep. Is this true or not? Because you tell the story from your point of view and where this has blown up. I'm not sure if it's true. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I love playing footy. So when I'm out there, I have that much fun. I get into it and I sort of lose my filter. Mm. So you're a, white, you're a white line fever type. Pretty much. Fighter. And so I'm not sure what I said or any of that sort of thing. I was told by someone in the game, I think it was, that I should shut up. I was yeah. talking a bit too much to them. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure. So I might have said it, I might not. Okay. Um, For the viewer context, there is a little story <laughs> going around that you have pushed out one of the premier ruckmen in the competition and just stood over him and yelled out, strength. I should, I should say, I actually, so in a game this year, because I've never confirmed it, in a game yeah. this year, an opposition player came up to me and said, is it true you said it? And, I went, <laughs> and it was the end of the game and I went, oh, I'm not sure. And he goes, look, if you did, like, a lot of respect. Yeah. But if you didn't, next time we, if we ever do a ruck contest against each other and you push me out, you've got to say it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so Who was that? I can't say. No, I'll, wait, to... I'll, wait, I'll, wait, I'll wait till I do it. Okay. I'll wait till I do it. It's pretty strong, so I need to make sure I can do it first. That's fantastic. <laughs> now, there's another little story that we've got in common too by the fact of you listening to my other podcast um, that we chat about. I just found out about this one now. What is this? You've used me as sort of an analogy of what not to be. Is that right? Like, I'm like <laughs> a bad version of what you could be. Well, you're a bit of motivation okay. because <laughs> you like to, every, in your podcast, you introduce people and go, you know, this person's played 150 games or done this, but I've only played 41 games. Career didn't pan out. Why are you doing this? Yeah, this is me, yes. And this is you yeah. talking, and I'm sitting there over pre-season and off-season doing my rehab going, mate, I'm on 41 games. <laughs> like, can you not make Can you not talk down 41 games? That took me eight and a bit years to get there. Yeah. In my ninth year. So now I've got you covered. I had to get back as fast as possible. So we're in the 50s now. Congratulations. But, geez, every time I... I wasn't sure if I could keep listening to the podcast. It was just every introduction going... Is it traumatising on it? Oh, it just reminded me of how much more I need to do. <laughs> it's actually quite funny that um, when I was stuck on... I was stuck on 38 games. Yep. And 38 is, like, for some reason, just aesthetically, on a jumper, just my most, like, hated number. <laughs> and I was like, I just don't want to finish on 38. So 41 was the 50 that you were going for for yep. me, which I'm very happy about. Anyway, moving on. Um, Bleed Posada. <laughs> now, you're an Italian man... Very Proud. Italian, very Italian. What is this about bleeding Posada? Uh, it just comes with the territory of being at Carlton, as you know from your experience. Ligon Street. Doesn't matter where you come from, once you're there for a little bit, you get exposed and the Posada just seeps into your veins. Yeah, Bon Giorno. <laughs> <laughs> the accent needs a bit of work. Yeah. But yeah, no, so just being at the Italian club, just Posada in the veins. So, I mean, that's why I had to re sign when I did, because I just couldn't leave. Once it's in there, you can't get it out. Yeah, congratulations on that one too, mate. So we're very proud as a cult supporter to get you signed up for a long period of time, Thank locking you. all the important players down. You're a very charismatic man. You're very funny. Because um, normally, right, like tall people, they don't have much. Uh, how do I say this? Oh, you're looking at me. Sort of, you're, you're sort of looking at me scarily <laughs> here. I'm sort of saying, normally the taller guys of our game, uh, they don't have as much personality as us young guys. But I feel like you are smaler guys. I feel like you, you've got a bit of a small man in you. I love you when young guys, not yeah. small guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, you are a dad now, so I don't know if you can, yeah, I I know if you can claim that. Receding hairline as well, so it doesn't help. Um, I see. I reckon you're clearly not hanging out with the 200-plus uh, boys enough, so clearly there's a bit of personality there. Mm. Um, I do need to get on that. Um, but 
Nah, there's, I, I like to think there's a bit to me. So, yeah, if you, that's why I'm here, just for you to probably have some questions. What's the, what is about you? You're into finance, you love your F1s, you're into footy, obviously. What else is there that might surprise the people out there? Uh, yeah, absolute sports nuffy. Um, I'm a mad Dallas Cowboys fan in the NFL. Really? Like, I'll get up at 3 a.m. to watch a game. Um, NFL fantasy, exact same. I have a league with some mates we've been doing for about 10 years, no money involved, but... We even have a, the equivalent of an AFL 360 power rankings and like write up of the results and the coaching each week, but no money, just pride. Um, but then on top of like all sports, F1 and all that, um, I'm actually a massive Swifty as well. So I love Taylor Swift. Um, I was online for all the um, tickets when they came out four hours both times, but I think I've managed to get some tickets, which I'm pretty excited for. If not, I'll be walking around the G with my dog. That's unbelievable. So what, what's happened with Taylor Swift? Well, give me your three top favourite songs. And is it just you or is it your partner, Elise, that's also a fan? I think I've made Elise a fan. Um, I've got a Taylor podcast. I'm mean, not a podcast, playlist. You've got a, you got a, a, ta- not a podcast. <laughs> you got a podcast about Taylor Swift. No, I've got a full playlist <laughs> of just Swift songs because there's too many classics. So, um, no, nah, probably, you know, Cruel Summer, Mean, 22, Probably a few of the easy ones to go off. Um, my obscure ones, Paper Rings. So you wouldn't even know that one. No, I don't. <laughs> I definitely will check it out, though. I like the fact um, that you're And I'm, just, I'm bringing her along so that I've got someone to come with me to the concert. <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite impressive, to be honest. You're famous with uh, cousin royalty, too. Now, Scotty James, one of Australia's best international athletes, um, obviously a professional snowboarder, X Games, done awesome things on the world stage. Relation? Yeah, uh, cousin. So How crazy is that? Small world and being able to watch his journey and get to where he is now and be so successful and still doing it to a, obviously further on, he's been doing it professional for probably 12, 13, 14 years now. Um, phenomenal, but also phenomenal for my career. Someone I've really leaned on over the years for advice and just being able to see what he does, get some exposure. Um, I did a running session with him over Christmas when he was here, just that sort of seeing an individual athlete, which is so different to what yeah. we know from a team point of view how driven you've got to be, how deliberate with everything, um, and just, yeah, always there for advice has been unreal. We're speaking about F1 before. Now, his connection to F1 is incredible. It's like crazy how the world works, but obviously being married now to Chloe Stroll. Yep. Dad is Lance Stroll. Uh, Lawrence. Lawrence, sorry, brother Uh, Lance. Lance, Which, obviously, they've got their own F1 team in McLaren. Uh, Aston Martin. Aston Martin. This is going well, isn't it? So you love your F1s. Has it been sort of connection in that space? Have you been able to get over there and get on the grid? No, I haven't been able to. I went this year for the first time, actually. Um, Just because I got into F1 sort of three, four years ago. I couldn't get tickets 2019. Was pumped to go 2020. COVID hit. Mm. And then obviously with the the show coming out, it was so popular. I couldn't get tickets because it was weekend of an AFL game. Couldn't work out when I was playing in time to actually go. But, um, yeah, I went this year, absolutely loved it, went with a few of the boys, um, and we've talked about potentially going in one of the off-seasons to whether it's Singapore, whether it's Vegas over the next couple of years, um, something I'll definitely try and tick off. Or Japan could be the other one. Japan, that would be unbelievable. That's by far my biggest bucket list place that I've never been yet. Um, Speaking of some footy of the Blues, what's been the biggest change for you? I know you've been at the Blues for for a while now, but obviously coming from Hawthorne, what have you found that's been such a big pick-up, obviously with your Tarrant heritage, but knowing how passionate the Carlton fans are as well, has that been something that's really surprised you? Definitely. Probably seeing when I came from Hawthorne, we were very successful my whole time I was at Hawthorne. When I came across, we weren't as successful. Um, and Hawthorne came off a few flags. Um, but to see the people who would turn up to an open training, to games, who just, you walk down the street and we start winning and you see more and more Carlton gear appear, it's sort of hard to comprehend. I don't think I really appreciated mm. that every, pers- every, every other person seems to be a Carlton supporter. And obviously the better we play, the more you hear about it because you walk in daily life and someone says something really positive about how they enjoy watching us play. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing because we've just got some phenomenal supporters, which I think if you can't play against this at a home game, it's definitely something that helps us on game day because it's just loud. Mm, I can't wait to see when, you know, the boys are obviously getting it together now along with yourself, but when that really does start flowing on, and we've seen it in history with Richmond, their supporters get around them. Carlton have just as big membership base and, and as much loyal supporters have just been a bit starved of success. So I'm so excited for the club to finally get back to that position. Best clubman, OK? You've got to be a pretty good bloke to win one of those. And you've got to be loved by all your teammates. Congratulations. When was that? Was that last year, the year before? You're driving me or yourself. No, you. I'm, you. Aware, I'm aware you had won one. Did I? <laughs> I don't know what year you yeah, won Yeah, I it. did win one, actually. You did win I best clubman? I forgot about that, yeah. OK, so I was describing you now yeah. about me. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, I won it. I, I did win one, so I like to think I'm a pretty good bloke. And being held in the same <laughs> regard as myself and Well, you're the opening else's... one. They talk about past winners. You're the first one. First name they mention and go, oh, we well, don't even need to mention the rest. Yeah, that's beautiful. What do you think makes you such a good teammate? Uh, I like to think I really invest in others. Mm. So the way I play on field is really to make my, uh, my midfielders in particular have an easier life by blocking for them, making predictable, bring my physicality so that they can just get their job done and the opposition sort of focuses on me. Mm. And then off field being able to invest in whether it's relationships with key defenders so that on game day I can understand what's going on, connect airily when I get back there, whether it's young guys coming through. We've got a first year ruckman this year, Hutto, who mm. you know, I'll try and get down to VFL games when he's playing, watch tape with him, help him through some of the craft aspects and just sort of help anyone with anything they need across the board really. Um, and then just bring a lot of energy. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. In all seriousness, it's uh, from what I have heard, we weren't lucky enough to play with each other, but you're a great person to have at the footy club, and that's why you're, you're there for such a long time in the future, which is really exciting for the footy club and the fans to hear. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Now, give us an update on some of the players at the Blues that aren't necessarily maybe setting the world alight yet, younger guys that you can see taking the club to the next level. We, we know of the guns, you know, right? It's just those next guys that need, it, need yep. to jump up. So I try to forget. I, f I forget because we've got so many blokes who come in and play a role that you forget who actually gets the attention sometimes. Well, even like Jordan Boyd coming in this year and playing the role he has. He was playing at Spotswood Footy Club like three or four years ago. No, now. I think it was as recent. It might have been 18 months ago. How even. crazy is that? Um, and he's, he's been phenomenal. Mm. I mean, he's. I think probably what's underrated by people is how good of a kick he is. Yeah. And then how good of a kick he is over 60 metres. Mm. Um, I think most people have seen, because he's not a lot of good kicks, obviously try and show that they're a good kick. I don't know if you're quite like that. I, no, I, I, I'm not the best kick, so I... I actually get tagged in things a lot saying this is what Dylan Buckley was trying to do <laughs> back in the night. So it's sort of like attempting to be like him. So a bit like that. So whereas he just, he'll take a lot of the easy ones, but yeah, he can, he can hit a target from anywhere 60 metres. So if you lead and get open, he'll find you. He's one of those rare players. Um, and being able to just get those lockdown jobs done. Um, we've got players like... Corey Durden, I think, gets mm. a bit of attention for good reason. Some of his pressure stuff is just phenomenal and he just pops up with more and more goals. Matty Owies is probably one who... I, don't, yeah, I mean, your reaction probably says enough. I love Matty Owies. I love Matty Owies. He has obviously come from a basketball background. Yep. I, I, you know when they talk about these basketball backgrounds, everyone thinks Scott Penderbury, right? They played it till they were, like, 16 and didn't play. But this guy was actually playing yep. up until... He hadn't played footy for sort of 10 years. Yeah, He's ages. come back now and playing regular senior AFL footy. And I think that the most exciting thing, to get my Carlton sort of nuffy hat on at the moment is, is we need more players like Matty Owies coming in and playing good footy because the yep. stars are always going to do their thing, but it's those the middle tier guys playing above their role, which I feel like he's doing at the moment. Yeah, and he's phenomenal, man. His ability to just apply pressure, but a lot of the stuff fans wouldn't see is the amount of blocking and body work he'll do to get other guys open. If you tracked him just at a game and saw how many marks inside 50 he created, you'd be absolutely amazed. Mm. It'd be the most innocuous looking highlight reel, but he's always there playing that role. Very exciting. So he, yeah, he's another great one. Very cool. Mate, uh, before we finish up, random one, what do you want to achieve? What's in a goal for you off field? What do you want to do in the next sort of 12 months off field? Uh, off field, I really just want to build sort of my community engagement, to be honest. That's where I'm at. Um, I don't think I've done enough so far done a little bit here and there, but I really want to sort of commit to something. Um, so that's sort of what Background I'm Background in finance? Mind. Yeah, so finance stuff. So I've done a, a um, from the academic side, I've done a commerce degree, accounting finance. Um, so I'll look to get, try and get some work experience over the next 12 months, um, try and really build that knowledge now I've got that degree. And yeah, just try and do a bit more community work in general. Have you, have you had a thought obviously about what that is? Is it staying in football in some sort of business admin role or is it you want to sort of look to get out of footy by the end of it? Uh, I love the idea of a ruck coach role at the end. I think oh, they've got a pretty good gig. Matty Cruiser. <laughs> I, honestly, you know what that is? It's like a best clubman that just, they love to hang around the club. Exactly. And get them hired there. So I think that's one of the best roles in football, I think. So Matt, if I stayed in football, that would be my, that'd be my role. <laughs> oh, I'd love that role. Um, but otherwise, no, nah, definitely branch out. Fantastic. Mate, so good to uh, see you finally catch up. And a big bottle of Pepper Jack here to say thank you for, oh, for coming online, mate. Much. So best of luck. Best of luck for the rest of the year and have a great off season. There you have it, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that chat. Join us next week for more when AFLW star Katie Brennan sits down to talk about women's footy, Auskick and her fitness secrets. This is Friday Knockoffs. I'm Dylan Buckley and we'll see you then. Nailed it. Yeah. Yes. Well done. How good was that?